tonight in the building. Can't talk to you unless we've got a parent or a legal guardian. Just let me go. This is DC Stevie Mosh. She's joining us from SO10. If you don't use it, you lose it. Oh my God, that reminds me of something I said to an ex-boyfriend, but that's a whole different story. I'm not playing football. It's what I am. Someone's got to make a stand. Guesses. I'll come back one to it. Bye. Terry, let's go. We've got an assault in a car park on Vincent Street. Max Carter's down there. Well, can't I can't finish my coffee first. Get the shit on the way, fella. Let's go. Where are you going? Oh, sorry, Gavin. I've got a call out. Possible getting run. Could you stand on a minute? Yeah. I, I want to introduce you to Stevie. Everybody, this is DC Stevie Moss. She's joining us from SO10. I want you all to make a feel at home. OK. Catch you later, Stevie. Nice to meet you, Stevie. I'm DC okay, Mickey Webb. Me. Terry Perkins, enjoy Terry, it. We'll catch you later, Stevie. We've got a shout. She's quite nice, isn't she? Yeah. Do you mind if I tag along? It's just that I like to keep moving, you know, get stuck in straight away. I hate that settling in thing. I just think, you know, if you don't use it, you lose it. Oh, my God, that reminds me of something I said to an ex-boyfriend, but that's a whole different story. Am I going the right way? Yeah, we've got an IC1 male, mid to late 20s. We've we got a name? Yeah. Robert. Okay. Yeah, so Robert Nash. The well, medics think he was struck by a car, so it looks like a hit and run rather than an assault. They think he's been lying here for several hours. Stand by. Do we know who found it? Yeah, a woman over there. She was on her way to work, just picked up her car, but she didn't see anyone else around. Right. Nice bike. Mm -hmm. Mate. Yes. That's his bike. You going with him? Yeah, I'll head down to St Hughes. Sally will fill you in. I'll give you a call later. Is that a tattoo? No, that looks like a hand stamp from the club Conundrum. It's uh, on Canley High Road, about five minutes from here. Right, I'll see you later. Sarge. Get off. Right. What have we got here? Lily Davies. We just picked her up for joyriding. That's a lie. Right. How old are you, Lily? I'm 14, so you can't touch me. You know what? You're right. I can't. But Zoe can. Empty your pockets. Is that yours? I've never seen it before in my life. You're too young to smoke. Good job they're not mine then, innit? Raise your arms, please. Touch me, and I'll get child protection onto you. Raise your arms now. Watch it. You're not doing yourself any favours behaving like this. Is this yours? Of course. Must have cost you a few quid. More than you could afford. Where'd you get it? Not that it's any of your business, but... my mum gave it me, so we can talk all the time. All right. Have you contacted her parents? Yeah, stepmom's on the way down now, Sarge. I don't want to hear. It's got nothing to do with her. Lily, you're under 18. We can't talk to you unless we've got a parent or a legal guardian present. You can just let me go instead. No. Yeah, so, I better just change my number in the end. It's a bit of a shame, really. He's quite a nice guy. I really liked his mother. She used to make the best cake she ever, like biscuits, cake, she right. make anything. Sarge, this is, um... DC Stevie Moss. This is DS Max Carter. Hi. Hello. Oh. Well, looks like a hit and run. How's the victim? Still unconscious, but he'll live. 
Sergeant Stone just called from St Hughes. As well as concussion, the victim, 28-year-old IC1 male Robert Nash, has got fractures to both legs, just below the knees. The doctor thinks he must have been walking away from the vehicle when he was hit. Do we know where the car was parked? No. There's no broken glass. CCTV? No, all out on this floor. So we don't have the collision? Afraid not. Uh, the good news is the camera on the exit is fitted with an AMPR, so we should be able to get an index. I've requested the disc from the cameras on the street, which should give us a much clearer timeline of when it happened. Good. Can you get that set up, Sally? Thanks. Have a look at this. The car drove through some oil, so there's a good set of tyre marks. The traffic officers are giving you a list of possible vehicles. The marks indicate that the vehicle turned towards the victim just before impact. Towards the victim? Yeah, maybe the driver lost control and steering failed. Well, maybe it wasn't an accident at all. And what makes you say that, Stephen? Well, it just strikes me as convenient that he managed to miss stationary vehicles but still hit a moving target half the size. It doesn't necessarily mean it's deliberate, though, does it? Maybe not, but I think it's worth bearing in mind. Mickey, Terry, I want you to go through the CCTV with Sally, see if we can get an idea on the car and the driver. That's all. Thanks. Stevie, I want you to concentrate on the victim. Find out everything you can about him. His work, his friends, his family, everything. If your hunch is right and someone was out to get him, I want to know who and why. Uh, wait. Wait. Are you Lily Stepman? Yeah. Hi, I'm PC Girl. This is PC Fletcher. How is she? She's fine, but we could really do with talking to her, sir. Lately, but yeah, well, she's lucky she didn't hurt herself or anyone else for that matter. He's never been in trouble with the police before. Uh, do you know who Darren is? No. Oh, I just think he was the boy that was driving the car. Well, we've just moved to the area a couple of months ago, so I haven't met any of her mates yet. Donna, is there anyone else that can look after the baby while we do this? <laughs> yeah, Lily. Well, it's Lily's that away, look. Yeah, Paul's a long distance lorry driver, so. Okay, and Lily's mum? Well, last we knew, she moved back to Scotland a couple of years ago, but we don't hear from her. Really? It's just the way Lily was talking, it was when I was in contact. Yeah, well, Lily says a lot of things, don't make them true. She's a liar, then, is she? Let's just say she's got a vivid imagination. Oh, Sally, perfect timing. This is Sally, she's great with babies. What? Um, OK. Can I? There you go. OK. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Cheers, Sally. Good luck. Hello, baby. There's other cars leaving hours earlier, but none driving like this. That's definitely it, unless it's Lewis Hamilton driving it. Can we get a good shot of the driver? No, they're masked by the roof of the car. They come up on the list of possible vehicles? Yeah. Get the index, will you? OK. There you go. PNC check, please. Sierra X-ray 05, Victor, Yankee Victor. Add to me. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Come on. <laughs> what's this? What's this? You check the CCTV from the street. Give me a break, Mick. You've been too busy babysitting. OK. My car was stolen an hour ago. And Will and Ben have already got someone in custody for it. That's quick work. Her name is Lily Davis, and she's age 14. Where was the car stolen from? It was taken from Vincent Street Car Park sometime after 11 last night. It's registered to a James Archer who lives at 19 Hanley Park. Jem Archer? Someone I should know. Yeah, he models underwear. Uh, he plays for Candy Town. Oh, he plays football as well, does he? He's an extra white Rooney, mate, I'm telling you. Yeah, better looking, though. Yeah, can I have the number for Candy Town Football Club, please? I'll tell you what. You might want to change her nappy. She's a little bit ripe. Oh. Oh, no. Oh, dear. That's not good, is it? I'll ask you one last time, Lily. Did you steal the car? I couldn't have done. I can't drive. Donna? It's true, she can't. <laughs> you know it was stolen, though, didn't you? I didn't think about it. This boy turns up, asked me if I wanted to drive, so I got in. Oh, you often take rides off of boys you don't know. Depends how fit they are. Where was this? By the parking unit estate. At what time? A few minutes before you two turned up. So about 7.15 then. Who's the boy, Lily? I don't know. He didn't tell me his name. I'd never met him before. Then why did you shout out Darren when he drove off in the stolen car? I didn't. Yes, you did. We were both there. We heard you. And you couldn't have done. You're a liar, Lily. And not a very good one either. All right, Callum, let me know when he's out. All right, boy. 
Stone says Nash is still in theatre. I'm gonna watch this boy, I'm telling you. I mean, he's got a temper like any of them, you know what I mean? I mean, Beck's had a temper when he started. But for raw talent, I'm telling you, he's got it. Hello, mate. I'm DC Webb. This is DC Perkins from hey. Sun Hill. Right. Joe Archer. See you goals on Saturday. Second one, what a volley. Cheers, mate. You can be town fan then? Yeah, 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 yeah. Born and bred. You, uh, you come back my car? Yeah, that's right. Well, that's quick. Any point in missing this money? Is it okay? Don't know. We haven't found it yet. It was involved in a hit and run. God, it's awful. Did anyone get hurt? Yeah, there's a guy in hospital, yeah. Is he all right? Well, he won't die, but he's not going to walk very soon. Gem, everything all right, sir? Uh, yeah, yeah, this is, um... I'm DC Webb, this is DC Perkins from Sun Hill. Come about Gem's stolen motor. That's right. I'm sorry I didn't catch your name. Ernie Rosen, Gem's agent. Hi. Pleased to meet you. You know, I gave him that car two weeks ago, early wedding present. Kids, eh? Yeah, we're in a hit and run. No. He says his lad in hospital. That's terrible. You caught the guy who did it? Not yet. What about the motor? <laughs> oh, don't tell me you haven't found it. We will. Great! And in the meantime, there's some nutter. Running around with Gem Archer's wheels, running people over. That's all we need. If the press get hold of this, they're going to have a field day. Claire, give me Harry. You got a problem? <laughs> Lily, this may seem like fun to you, but the car you were in was involved in a hit and run in the early hours of this morning. The man was really hurt. He could have been killed. What's that got to do with me, Lily? Please. Look, Lily, we know the car you was in was involved. If you're trying to cover up for Darren because you know he's the one who stole the car in the first place, you should tell us now. I don't know what you're talking about. So when did you notice your car was missing? Uh, when I got back to the car park about, I don't know, five o'clock this morning. Did you hear or see anything suspicious? No, nothing. You parked your car in a car park in Vincent Street, is that right? Do you remember which floor? Uh, first floor. Where was the accident? In the car park. Probably not far from where you parked your motor. What time did you leave it there? Uh, just after 11 last night. Where were you going? Uh, clubbing. Shouldn't really have gone, but my fiance begged me, so. Is that her? Yeah, it's Michelle. Michelle Rosen. Rosen? Is she in a relationship agent? Yeah, yeah, it's his daughter. Was she with you last night? Huh? She was for most of it, but by the end I was by myself. She got a headache and wanted to go home early, so I stayed on for a bit. So if the accident happened at half eight in the morning, how come we didn't report it to the couple of hours later? I don't know, I just. I wanted to get back to our place and have a shower. I didn't think a couple of hours would make a difference. How did you get home? Uh, walked up to Canley High Road and just got a cab from there. What, from the rank? No, no, a mini cab off the street. All down here. And I can't have my star player being a spectator for too long. Yeah, sure. He um, just has to come down to the station and make a statement. Tell you what, I drive them there myself. But after training, OK. Fine. Um, listen, I think I left my phone in that car, so if there's anything you can do to get a car. We do have uh, Cheers, lads. Oh, Jim, one more thing. You don't know anyone called Robbie Nash, do you? Uh, no, no, never heard of him. Who is he? That was a guy who got hit in the accident. Sorry, can't be there. Get out there, son. I've been looking at the CCTV from a camera on Vincent Street, junction with Goldstone Road, about uh, 200 metres from the car park. Well, can I just tell you something? That's a really interesting perfume you've got. You know what, that is... That's eau de poo. <laughs> right. Lily Davis, 14-year-old girl that Will and Ben picked up this morning for taking and driving away. What about her? They released her on bail. Is that her? Driving Jem Archer's Saab. So why did Bill and Ben let her go? They thought she was covering up for her boyfriend, Darren James. But see the time code? 0456, that's what. Almost 20 minutes from when the car was driven out of the car park. Remember, this is over 200 metres up the road. Maybe she stopped to have a look at the damage. Or maybe she was in shock. Or maybe it wasn't Lily Davis that drove the car out of the car park. Why'd you say that? Remember your gag about Lewis Hamilton? When Lily was driving, it was like wacky races. She was all over the road, like she'd never been behind the wheel of a car before. Whoever drove that car out of the car park knew exactly how to drive. So you're saying you think there were two drivers? One that nicked the car, ran over Nash and dumped it, and then Lily came along and took over? Just an idea. That's one we've had so far. Mm. I wish we get Bill and Ben and bring her in again. Wait, it's more. We've got Jen Saab. What did this happen? Uniform picked it up about half an hour ago. They saw it on some back road off the park mead. They found Darren drunk on the back seat, sleeping it off. What did he have to say? He confirmed that Lily was the one to bring the car to him, but said that he didn't realise it was stolen. Forensics have just headed over there to pick it up. So now, do I smell a baby poo? That's roses. Definitely roses. Oh, very much. 
438, Gemma just saw leaves the car park in Vincent Street, seconds after hitting Robbie Nash. 4.56. Lily Davis is caught on camera driving the same car less than half a mile away. Right, we're working on the theory that there are two drivers. Driver one is unknown, drives fast but skillful. Driver two is Lily Davis, seen here, bunny hopping down the street. We can't be certain of that until we speak to her. Will and Ben are going to bring her in again. So what did the victim have to say for himself? Nothing yet. He still hasn't regained consciousness. The hospital are going to notify us as soon as he's able to talk. What do we know about him? Robbie Nash, 28, no previous. Works as a barman in a pub in town. His manager says he pretty much keeps himself to himself. Divorced, one kid. We're still trying to locate the ex-wife. Any other family we should know about? Oh, I spoke to his parents this morning. They sound quite nice, actually. They retired to Spain a few years ago. They're going to try and get the next available flight over. That's about it for the moment, Gough. Terry, did you say that Nash and Archer were at the same club last night? Yeah, but Archer claims that he doesn't know who Nash is, but we think he's lying. And when's Archer coming in to make a statement? This afternoon, so we're going to have to do a bit of digging, speak to the victim and visit the club. Forensics have come back on the car. None of the windows were smashed and the, uh, the car was hot white. But apart from that, it all looks like it's in perfect working order. Brakes, steering. Right, Max, you and Stevie get out in the hospital. See if this victim remembers anything when he wakes up. Mickey, you and Terry get down this club where Nash and Archer were last night. See if you can pick anything up. Governor. Siros Kirkland 543 shows TOA at Lily Davies' home address. There was no sign of it at school, over. Uh, we should have known Lily swiped that car. I mean, can you believe she just sat right in front of us and lied like that? Well, she was pretty convincing, I'll give her that. Yeah, that's what scares me. She's only 14. Hello, Donna. Is Lily in? No. No, she's not at school either. <sighs> Do you mind if we come in? You'll have to excuse the state of the place. We still haven't finished unpacking yet. Sorry. Are you all right? Yeah, I'm fine. It's just, it's just everything's just getting on top of me, that's all. Can't Lily's dad help out at all? Paul's working all the hours, God sends. Can you think of anywhere else where she might have gone? No. <laughs> oh, she stormed out after we had an argument about this Darren she says she'd been seeing. Did she say anything else about him? Uh, surname, address, anything? No. OK, well, could you call her on her mobile, see if she could come back? It's really important. She hasn't got a mobile. Well, she had one on her when we arrested her. It was black, quite expensive. That's not hers. Well, didn't she get it from her mum? Is that what she said? Yeah. Lily's mum doesn't give Lily a phone call, let alone anything that's worth any money. Lily won't accept that. Look, Donna, will you give us a ring when you see her, yeah? It is for a run. Yeah. We'll show ourselves out. All right. Well, she's like you got it easy, is she? It seems like Lily took that phone from the car. Yeah. Well, what are we going to do now? Lily could be anywhere, couldn't she? Yeah, maybe. But she's going to come back at some stage, isn't she? That's how we wait for her. Yeah? For how long? Mm, as long as it takes. So, you were walking to your motorbike? I can't remember it. Was it dark in the car park? Yeah. Very dark. Before the car hit you, did you see headlights? I don't know. I don't think so. What do you do for a living, Robbie? I work in a bar up west. Robbie, can you think of anyone who might want to hurt you? No. No. Why? I thought, wasn't it an accident? Let me put it another way. If I told you we think somebody had driven into you on purpose, would you be surprised? Do you know a man called Joe Archer? A footballer. That's right. I've seen him once or twice. He's come in the bar where I work. Why? It was Archer's car that hit you. Was he? Well, Mr. Archer reported his car stolen at half past eight this morning. And we got it on CCTV, leaving the car park at 4.38 a.m. But... We don't know who was driving it. Not yet. OK, Robbie. We'll leave it there for now. Thanks very much. We'll come back and see you later, when you're feeling better. All right? Closed. Are you Ray Temple? Depends. Who wants the note? DC Perkins and DC Webb. What can I do for you? I understand Jem Archer and his missus were in there last night. It was a busy night. No CCTV then. Guess didn't like it, so I took it out. You remember this guy. He's a footballer, a bit of a celebrity. Gets a lot of attention wherever he goes. Told you. I can't help you. Fair enough. We'll come back with Charlie, see if that'll refresh your memory. Who's Charlie? Uh, Black Lab, ever so friendly. What's he on about? I'll tell you what I'm on about. Sniffer dog with a nose for cocaine. I'll have him outside your door welcoming all your guests. 
And Charlie loves celebrities, doesn't he? Celebrities love Charlie. Gem Archer was here last night. Got here about 11, left about four. There you go, wasn't that difficult, was it? Who was he with? His fiancée. And she left before he did. And why is that? I don't know. We'll take an educated guess. Jem's got a reputation with the ladies. He likes to score, and not just on the pitch. What about last night? He's discreet. He doesn't flaunt it like some of them. Only I did see him have a row. Gem and Michelle? She was upset, crying. Was there anyone else involved? Come on, don't get all shy on me now. This guy I'd never seen before. The guy? He might have been hitting on Michelle. If he was, Jem wouldn't have liked it one bit. He's old-fashioned like that. What's this guy look like? Slim, mid-twenties, 5'10", dark, shoulder-length hair. One of the bouncers told me he had a big bust-up, yelling and shouting. I don't know what about. So Jem, Michelle and this guy were together? You know, I had a call telling me not to talk to you. Who from? From Jem's agent, Ernie Rosen. What did he say? That Jem and Michelle had a right to their privacy and I shouldn't talk to anyone about them. Not even you lot. Else what? Jem will find somewhere else to have his fun and take his celeb mates with him. So if you don't mind, gentlemen. No, we haven't had this little talk. Right, there she is. Come on. No, wait a minute. If she sees us now, she might get away. Wait for her to go in. Right, you go in front. I'll be running there, yeah? She in. She's in the living room. Okay. Lily. Lily, wait! Wait, 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 wait. Oh, Calm please. down. Calm down, all right? Lily Davis, I'm arresting you for the offence of taking and driving away. You don't have to just calm yourself down, all right? Oh. You don't have to say anything that may harm your defence. Oh. Oh. Stop it! It may harm your defence, but do not mention when twisted and something you can relate to a line in court. And if you do say, so, maybe be given in evidence. Do you understand, Lily? You are in big trouble, young lady. Do you understand the caution? Look, you were seen on camera driving the car away. Do you understand? Yes, I understand. Look, Lily. Yeah. It's interesting stuff on this phone, Lily. Should have shared this with us before. <sighs> Jim Archer. Michelle Rosen, Robbie Nash, all in the same club last night where they had an argument. Any idea about what? Yeah, I've got an idea. Jim tries to get off with someone else, takes his eye off the ball. No, thanks. Robbie moves in, makes a move on Michelle. Jim gets the arm. That's worth keeping in mind. But let's keep speculation to a minimum, shall we? Now, what do we actually know? OK, we know that Jim lied about knowing Nash. Yeah, we know that Nash did the same for Jim. He said he never actually met him. Right, so facts are thin on the ground. OK, but we know that these two definitely know each other and there's something they're not telling us. Any more forensics from the car yet? Still waiting. Lee Davis? Will and Ben are waiting for her. Good. When they bring her in, I want you in on the interview, Mickey. Sarge, did Nash say anything else to you? Not much, poor bloke. Convenient amnesia says he doesn't even remember being knocked down. Well, there's something. Nash works in a bar, right? But he wears an expensive Rolex, a gold identity bracelet, and he rides a top-of-the-range motorbike. Yeah, well, I got a watch like that once from a bloke in Falaraki. Oh, I bet you did. But this was kosher. Heavy. Five grand's worth of watch easy. That bike must be worth a mortgage at least. Maybe Nash is dealing a bit of blow. Not on sight. Well, he hasn't got any form. So where else could he be getting that kind of money from? He managed to track down his ex-wife. Looks like he's not that reliable a dad when it comes to paying child support either. Up until a few months ago, weeks would go by when he said he couldn't afford to pay her anything at all. So what's changed? She said she didn't know, but that suddenly he seems to have money to burn. Shall I um, ask the financial investigation unit to go into his accounts? Mm. I don't know. Donuts went down a treat then. I have one. Yeah, minute on the lips, lifetime on the hips, girl. But they taste so good. <laughs> mm. I was just borrowing the car to get home before she woke up. I was going to give it back. Home from where? You shouldn't have been out in the first place at that time in the morning. Were you with that Darren? What if I was? For God's sake, Lily, you're 14. You're just a baby. Old enough to pull one over on you, aren't I? Where do you take the car from, Lily? That street, back of Canley High Road. Vincent Street? But benefit at the tape, Lily nods yes. You take it from the car park? No. It was on the street. The driver's door was unlocked. Was there anyone else around? No. I wouldn't have taken it if there was. Was the engine still running when you got there? No. Then how did you start the car? I hotwired it, didn't I? You hotwired the car. You sure nobody else did that before you got there? For the benefit, For the benefit of, the of the tape, the gay copper's picking his nose. Lily! Did you find this in the car, Lily? For the benefit of the tape, I'm showing Lily exhibit BG1. It's a black phone. The tape, Lily. 
Yes, I found it on the floor by the driver's door. Oh, it just fallen down there, had it? Well, how else would it have got there? Do you know who it belongs to? Yeah, Jem Archer. Lily, there were three personal texts that were sent from that phone last night. Did you read them? Yeah, so what? I was gonna give it back, wasn't I? Oh, you were gonna give the phone back to Jem Archer, were you? Yeah. Why, the goodness of your own heart? No, for 500 quid, actually. So you've been in touch with Jem Archer? Yeah, we talk all the time. Please, Lily, for once, would you just stop lying? I'm not lying. Ask him yourself if you don't believe me. I was supposed to be meeting him at one o'clock today outside the training ground. That's in under an hour. I know. So if we could get this wrapped up any quicker, then I might still make it. I don't think you realise how much trouble you're in, do you, Lily? You stole a car on a phone and now you've just admitted to blackmail. You can't touch me. I'm 14. Yeah? I wouldn't be so sure about that. It would be suspended. Jem Archer slipped out of the club last night, apparently, to meet up with some girl who wasn't his bride to be. That's from these texts. Mm -hmm. You got the lucky girl's name? No names. It's all very discreet. And you can't trace the number? How's your go, Gov? We tried calling it, but it switched off. Ghost had a bog standard voicemail. And the phone was in the car? Yeah. We think Archer left it there by mistake. It seems that he's very keen to get it back, too. So keen, in fact, that when Lily Davis got in touch with him, he agreed to pay her £500 to get it back from her. They're supposed to meet at one o'clock at Canley Town Training Ground. We've got anyone over there? Yeah, Terry and Mickey are on their way now, Gov. OK, so if Lily Davis hot-wired the car in the first place, how did whoever ran over Robbie Nash get in and start the car? Well, it looks like whoever nicked the car probably used a key. So that brings us back to Archer. Now, assuming he's only got one key, what would be his motive? Blackmail. Any evidence? Well, we just heard back from the FIU. Jem Archer withdrew £2,000 two weeks ago in cash. Professional footballer. Probably spent it on air gel. Except that two days later, Robbie Nash paid the same amount into his account, also in cash. Very tidy. But that could be a coincidence. Well, five other payments match up. We've got three 500s, two thousands going back six months so far. Well done, Stevie. Right, I'll leave you to it. Thanks, Gov. Right. I think we should have another word with Mr Nash, don't you? My sentiments, exactly. Mm. Jeb, change your plan. Lily's not coming. Who's Lily? It's a lot of money, isn't it? Just to buy yeah. your phone back, isn't it? It's private. Come on, mate. I think we should go down the station. <laughs> How many people have got keys to your car? Um, just me and Michelle had a spare set. Right. Because whoever stole your car and ran over Robbie Nash used the key to get into the vehicle. It's impossible. So what? You think I'd run this guy down? Did you? No. But why would I? I'd never know him. You were seen at Conundrum last night. You, Nash and Michelle having an argument. Jim, you've been blackmailed by Robbie Nash. Look, I thought I'd just say to give a statement about my car. We'll talk about that later. Just answer the question, please. Yeah, all right, no. I've done nothing to be blackmailed for. So what's the argument at the club about then? <laughs> Some guy will bother him, Michelle. I told him to get lost in your medicine. I didn't quite catch his name. I thought Robbie Nash then didn't know. Why are you lying to us? We read your texts. We know that you slipped out of the club around 2 a.m. last night. Who are you with? What is this? What you think I'm being blackmailed about? Jim, what's your missus think about you playing away, eh? Well, she doesn't need to know, does she? OK, so you entered the car park in the early hours of this morning and you're telling us that you didn't see or hear anything suspicious at all? No, I didn't. Not even an unconscious man laying on the floor. But do you honestly think I could see something like that and just walk away? No, I won't wait. I want to see him. I want to see him now! Any? Jim! Jim, sit down, will you? We're not finished. Jim! What the hell are you thinking of? Why haven't you got a solicitor? He doesn't need a solicitor. He's just helping us with our inquiries. Well, not him, are he's not. No, he still needs to make a statement, OK? We need to ask him some questions about the car. Jem's sister will be in touch. You can talk to him. Hello, Princess. Yeah, got him here. Do you want to talk to him? Yeah, I know. What do you reckon? I reckon the last person left to speak to is the bride-to-be. Well, no one sends me flowers like that. Who are they from? Mates from work, I think. You don't know. There was no card. So, you had a chance to think about who might have done this to you. You sure it wasn't an accident? Pretty sure, yeah. You told us you didn't know Jem Archer. So? So, you were with him in the club last night, where you had an argument. You, Archer, and his girlfriend, Michelle Rosen. But I, I don't know what. We'd like to know what about. Is it because you were hidden on Michelle? I mean, who wouldn't? She's gorgeous. I didn't see Jem Archer. Is there some other reason? Were you trying to blackmail him, Robbie? What? 
That's crazy. You think Archer's been paying you large sums of money over several months? What was it for, Robbie? I don't know what you're talking about. So you didn't discover that Archer was having an affair behind his fiance's back? No. And you didn't pay for that watch with blackmail money? No. What about your motorbike? No. Look, you're confusing me. Please, just leave me alone. What's going on? Close up. Can I help you? Show Rosa. Yeah, I'm I know busy. who you are, but as you can see, I'm very busy. Right. We're investigating a hit and run involving your fiance's car. We'll find out who stole the car and you'll find out who was driving it, won't you? Michelle, um, we're just trying to find out what happened last night, that's all. Me and Jem went clubbing. We had a good time. I left early because I was tired. End the story. I understand Jem left the club at some point last night as well, about two o'clock. Did he? I didn't notice. We're not joined at the hip, you know. I need more concealer just here. I also know that you and Jem had a row with a fella called Robbie Nash. I don't know anyone called Robbie Nash. If you're going for the natural look, you need more bronzer. Michelle, do you just want to tell me what the argument was about last night in the club? Are you talking about the guy that was hitting on me? Was that Robbie Nash? Is it true you got the only other set of keys to Jem's car? So what? I'm a suspect as well now, am I? We're just trying to establish the facts, that's all. Look, the fact is, yeah, I do have a set of keys to the car, but I've never driven it. It's Jem's pride and joy. It doesn't let anybody else drive it. Look, I'm sorry, I really want to do everything I can to help you in your investigation, but I've already told you everything I know. Thanks for your time. No problem. Right, come on, guys. Out here, let's do this. Claire? You ready? Oh. So, what do you think? What do I think? Probably one of the most annoying birds I've ever met in my entire life, but I wouldn't climb over her to get to you, Terrence. It's about what she said. Oh, yeah. Well, she's definitely hiding something, isn't she? I think so. What, though? I'm not sure yet. Right, we still need to find out some things. What were Nash, Archer and Michelle round about last night? Did Nash get greedy? Did Jen refuse to pay him? Why did Michelle leave the club early? Where did she go? What time did she get back to the new flat? And how did she get there? Sally's checking the CCTV outside Jen's flat, so we should know exactly when she got in. Maybe Nash told her that Jem was playing away. That would put a damper on your evening. We know that the only two people with keys to the car are Jem and Michelle. We need to find out if anybody else had access to those keys at any point. And also, we need to find out who she is. We know she sent Jem those texts. We know he slipped out to meet her. Why is Archer's agent so keen to stick his nose in? Maybe he's just protecting his daughter. Or protecting his asset. Uh, how much is Jem Archer worth, exactly? Well, if the Premiership signed him up, the sky's the limit. Endorsement, sponsorship. Right, let's get Ernie Rosen in. See if he can corroborate Michelle's story about her whereabouts after she left the club. Her. No, you're not talking to Jem, you're talking to DC Stevie Moore, Sun Hill. I mean, I said. He hung up. He? Yeah. That was Robbie Nash. Robbie! What's going on? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, come here. I'm not gonna hurt him. Leave him alone. What is going on? A couple. Are you sure? Straight from the horses, man. But well, where are they now? Steve is at the hospital with Nash. Gem Archer's here waiting to be interviewed. Listen, I thought you two should be the ones to interview him now as you've already spoken to him before. Is that all right? Yeah, no problem at all. Sure. Love it. So, does that mean that she's free to go now? For now, yeah. The youth offending team will be in contact with you, so stay away from boys like Darren. In fact, stay away from boys at full stop, all right? Yeah. That's my watch. Well, you stole that as well. It is. What do you say, young lady? I'm really sorry. Don't put me in prison, OK? I'd, I'll stay out of trouble, I promise. Yeah, well, I'll be watching you, all right? Thank you, again. Don't worry, I won't tell anyone. What? You're going soft in your old age. Shut up. That's like you can't for a baby now. Yeah, yeah. Let me cure Okay, so when I got there, the car had gone. So had Robbie. No, oh, at least that's what I thought at the time. The only thing left there was his bike. So when you found out Robbie had gone, what did you think had happened? I don't know what to think. I mean, I would have tried ringing him, but I'd left my phone in the car, so. Where was Michelle at this point? Well, when I told her I wanted to be with Robbie, she just left the club. She 
you called her dad and he came and picked her up. Well, he was at the club. Yeah. Did you see him? No, but I know he picked Michelle up because he told me. When did he tell you that? This morning. He came round first thing. He said, I'd be committing career suicide if I came out now and he won't be my agent anymore. He said I had to choose. Robbie or football. So you caved in. I can't not play football. It's what I am. Isn't there some way that you can be with Robbie openly and play football? You are joking, aren't you? Fans would have a field day. Do you know, they jump on the slightest thing that makes a player stand out from the rest of the team. Can you imagine what they do to me? They'd crucify me. Someone's got to make a stand, Jim. Yeah. But why does it have to be me, eh? So if we need to find you, you'll be at the hospital, yeah? Well, I don't know how good it'll do that. Jim, there you are. Don't you worry about a thing, son. I'm gonna have this whole mess sorted out. These people obviously can't tell their ass from their elbow. It's what it's come to, is it? A man reports his car stolen, what do you lot do? Nothing. You OK, son? I'm not your son, OK? Just leave me alone. What's going on, Jim? Just stay away from me, all right? Stay away from Robbie as well. Will he be OK? DS Carter will take good care of him. We just want to ask you both a few questions, that's all. So, how long have you and Jem been together? About two years. Off and on. That must be hard. Not keeping it all under wraps like you do, how do you cope? Well, we don't. Not really. Is that what the argument was about in the club last night? <sighs> Listen, anything you say to me, anything at all, it's all in the strictest confidence. I just want to find out who put you here. Jem came out from the club to meet me at two. I thought he was going to stay with me all night. But then he said he had to get back to Michelle. Normally I would have just let it go, but something just snapped. I just couldn't take it anymore. So I told him it was her or me. What happened next? He told Michelle it was all over. And um, Michelle, she, she knows all about you both. It was her idea to be our cover. All she's ever been interested in is getting in with the celebrity set. She doesn't give a stuff about Jem. What happened after Michelle left the club? Jem and I have always been careful to leave a place separately, to avoid any suspicion. So I left first. We were going to meet in the car park and go back to mine. But the last thing I remember is walking to my bike. Right. So Nash wasn't blackmailing Jem after all? No, it turns out Jem was giving Nash money to help pay his child support. So that leaves Ernie and Michelle as our most likely suspects. Well, Michelle's got keys to the car and she has motive. Yeah, but Ernie could have easily got hold of those keys and he stands just as much to lose if Jem and Robbie went public about their relationship. What about their alibis? Each other, apparently. Ernie picked up Michelle and drove around from the club. And has Ernie corroborated that? Not yet, Governor. He's downstairs waiting to be interviewed now. What about Nash? Still doesn't remember anything from the car park. Do we believe him? Yeah, I do. No reason not to. All right, well, Mickey, tell him. Have a word with Ernie, see what he can tell you. And you two have a word with Michelle. I mean, one of them knows what happened to Robbie Nash, so let's find out which one. We just want to find out what actually happened, so we can clear up timings and events, OK? Do I have a choice? What's wrong, Ernie? You've got something to hide. <laughs> so, what time did Michelle call you to come and pick her up at the club? I don't know. I was asleep. No. Oh, about four. She was stuck. Phoned me for a lift. How did she seem to you when you picked her up? Well, Michelle was upset. She had an argument with Jem, but she was more worried about getting a lift home. Really? Yeah. Really. So she didn't take Jem's announcement that he wanted to be with Nash seriously? Have you got a minute? It's probably nothing, but I've been going through the security tape from outside Jem Archer's flat. And? And it turns out that Archer's fiance lied about what time she got back in the club. How much later are we talking? Well, well over an hour. That's good work. Thanks very much. Bye. You drive over to the club, you pick up Michelle and you drive her home. No, I, uh, no, I didn't. Wait, you did drive her home, didn't you, Ernie? I mean, CCTV will confirm this. No. I didn't. Well, what did you do? Come on, Ernie, what did you do after you picked your daughter up from the club? I gave her my keys and then she drove herself home. So Michelle drove herself home and you stayed behind? Why? To see Jim. Well, did you see him? 
No, I didn't. But you looked? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I bet you did. You tried desperately hard to get hold of Jim, didn't you? But you couldn't because his mobile phone was in the car. So what'd you do? Did you go to the club? Hmm. So what'd you do? You don't know. No, no, sorry, no, sorry, no, sorry, no, sorry, no, sorry. Hung around the car park and uh, after a while I just went up. He hung around on the off chance. Not exactly your style, is it, Ernie? You went to Jem's car, didn't you? You knew he had to come back there eventually. Michelle told you where they parked, so you waited by his car. Or did you wait in his car? Did Michelle give you her set of keys? Only you will never suppose. Michelle was adamant that she knew what she was doing when she got involved with Jim. Promised me that there was no way he could hurt her. But it was just one thing after another. And then she told me what happened in the club. And I knew that enough was enough. Nobody humiliates my little girl like that. Oh, you tried to kill Nash? I didn't try to kill anyone. I'm not a murderer, I just wanted to scare him. Nash was about to ruin everything my little girl had worked so hard to achieve. Okay. Thanks, Gov. We'll keep you posted. Looks like Terry and Mickey beat us to it. Ernie Rosen has just confessed to the hit and run on Robbie Nash. Hey, what's going on? Michelle, are you okay? Nah, she's fine. You know it's fine, aren't you, Michelle? Don't go to hell. Why don't we all just calm down a bit, eh? Yeah, you want to know run Robbie down? Eh? Well, there <laughs> she is. Well, go on. Tell her. Tell her how you waited for him in the dark. How you put your foot down and drove towards him. Go on. Tell her what will go on in your sick little mind when you left him for dead. Well, come on, princess. Tell her. Tell him how you did it because nobody's more important than you. Me, your dad, everyone has to fit into your life. Your plans! I'm just stop. It's okay, what? Michelle. Now you stop for Robbie! Stop! I can't believe this even now you've got everyone running round after you! Look, why don't we go inside? It's cold out here. I didn't mean to hurt him. I just wanted to scare him away. Wait, no, no, no. Robbie's going to be fine. Let's go inside, eh? Sorry for Michelle. Sorry for her. You are kidding, aren't you? Yeah, well, to be that obsessed with fame, you're prepared to do anything it takes to get it. Listen, she ran over her Beyonce's gay lover. That's got to be at least front page news. I'd say she's about to get exactly what she wants. You want to feel sorry for anyone? It's very thoughtful, Jim Archer. Oh, yeah. What do you reckon he's going to do now? Well, that's not much he can do. Once the press gets hold of this, that's it. His career's over. What about you? What about me? Well, you've, uh... Never fancied yourself as a bit of a footballer's wife, then? <laughs> You're joking, aren't you? My legs. All that money for sitting around on your jacksie all day doing nothing. I think I'd rather stick pins in my eyes, quite frankly. I don't know. If you ask me, these girls aren't as stupid as they look, you know. Take you as a case in point. You're used to working, what, 12, 13 nowadays? If I'm lucky. Exactly. And you're out there on the streets with nothing between you and God only knows what, and what thanks you get at the end of the day. Hmm? Nothing. Well, I wouldn't exactly no say... No real pay, and certainly no respect. Whatever you do is never enough. You put one villain away, three more pop up in his place. Or her place. Or her place, whatever. Next thing you know, you're 65, being pushed out of the job you love by a bunch of night old kids who weren't even born when you made your first arrest. You enjoy working here, then? I love it. <laughs> well, thank God for Stevie and Max, because if it was left up to Mickey, the wrong geezer would have been banged up for ten years. Remind me never ever to become a dad if lying for your kids when you end up doing like that. Yeah, well, you don't have to worry about that, Mickey. No? No, because you'd have to find a girlfriend first. Oh! Drink? You are free? I wasn't. Oh! <laughs> Oi! Run, leave, I leave her. Wait for me! Come on, little lady, run! That's a bit personal, Grandad. Next time Daddy! on The Bill. <laughs> what you did was stupid and dangerous. <laughs> You're not filming anyone. That's probably because I'm telling the truth. You couldn't tell the truth if you tried. I promise you, if you hurt her, I will bury you. Sarge. Coming up, Michelle Heaton investigates Britain's booze culture and sees firsthand the effects alcohol can have. I shouldn't do it, but I do. When everybody else in the country does, everybody goes out and gets drunk. The truth about binge drinking is next.